another video from Jofen. Uh, I'm at Bao An Su. It's a Fu De Zhen Shen temple, uh, also a land god. Um, more commonly known in Taiwan as Tu Di Gong. Uh, and it's right here on the very edge of Jofen proper. Um, I found this one, or I stumbled upon it, uh, in January 2018, and I was, uh, I actually made a, um, uh, an entry for this on Google Maps with some of my photos, but somebody else has come since then and, uh, sniped my discovery. But I want to go up and I want to show you some interesting things here. Uh, the first thing I want to take a look at is here, there's a donor stone. Uh, so most sh shrines and temples in Taiwan will have a placard or a stone with the names of donors. Uh, this one's very interesting, and it's it's really difficult to read because the stone is wet. Um, but usually what you'll have is uh, on the side columns, at the very, very edge, uh, here and here, you'll have information about the shrine and the year that the stone was erected, or the name, or the year that all the donations were made. Uh, then in the middle you usually have all the names of the donors, and here you can even see at the very bottom, uh, it indicates how much these individuals were donating. Um, but what's interesting is that this stone has been cracked, uh, the corners are gone, and it makes me think that this was probably erected in the Japanese period. Um, Jofen really grew into a, into a thriving uh, mining community during the Japanese period, especially during uh, the reign of Zhao He, uh, who would be Emperor Hirohito, or now known as Showa. Um, and so what happened is, uh, here it's really difficult to see, but it says, uh, I think that's either the number 1 or 2, then the number 10, and then the number 1, and then you see the character for year. So this looks like whoever's reign it was, it was at least in the 11th year. It could be the 21st year. I just can't tell because of the way that it's cracked. Um, but when the, when the uh, nationalist Chinese came to Taiwan back in 1945 through 1949, especially in that intermittent period, uh, they engaged on a very, very uh, systematic campaign to de-Japanize everything here. Uh, and then afterwards, during the martial law period, when they were really trying to establish the Chinese identity, uh, they really ramped up all of the anti-Japanese sentiment uh, with all of their destruction. So let's continue. I'm standing on some incredibly slippery tiles here. I'm wearing my flip-flops, which is not a good idea. Uh, in Taiwan, almost everywhere it rains half of the time, and almost everything is surfaced in slippery tiles. So here we have the land god. Um, it's actually a shrine within a shrine, and what this is showing me is that uh, this is at least the second or third iteration of construction. Um, this shrine here itself is probably made out of concrete, and then it has tiles from either the 60s or the 70s, maybe even the 80s or 90s. Um, back in the 60s and 70s especially, that's when Taiwan really started pushing their uh, textile, or their tile industry, sorry. Um, so looking at some, the shape of some of these tiles, that's telling me it's the late 60s, early 70s. So normally these shrines would be outdoors, they'd be along uh, mountain trails, and they would be made out of uh, carved stone. Um, but this one looks like they got rid of the carved stone and rebuilt it as concrete. And if you look at the side, the walls are basically the same material as the walls here. This is a washed concrete.
So on the outside, uh, there are some more incense sticks. And this is very common to see on uh, a lot of places, especially these small shrines. Uh, but you can see them outside of businesses, outside of houses. And these are incense sticks for the God of Heaven. Um, and because the God of Heaven is outside, he's always got uh, his incense sticks burning outside. Uh, the only case is when I was in Penghu where it's too windy and people would put their incense sticks on the inside just above their door. And here's a furnace for burning money for Tudi Gong. And then behind you can see that there's a cliff and the mountain and some beautiful trees. And so this is really good feng shui as well. You want to have some vegetation behind the shrine. You want to have it connected to the mountainside behind it, sitting against the mountain to draw energy from the earth. Uh, the trees themselves are supposed to represent uh, the fecundity of the earth. Uh, because this is a land god, there is always a desire to associate him with the banyan tree, which indicates good water, it in also indicates good land. And there's a lot of stuff here. Ooh! We have a friend. These guys are all over Taiwan. Uh, they can grow to be massive in size. I'll put my hand here for comparison. I mean, that's a huge spider. And you can usually see these guys hanging from a lot of uh, trees, branches, corners of buildings. Whoa! Wasn't sure where he was going. I say he, but it could be a she. And I want to say that it's uh, a... I can't even remember the name. I don't want to get it wrong because I know that there are a lot of people out there who will get really angry. All right. So I think that's a high note to end this tour off on. And there's me. All right. Thanks for watching.